taking you through the action from round eight of the Grundig Cross Country World Cup. The races today come from Mammoth Lakes, California in the high Sierra Nevada, a popular year-long holiday region about seven hours drive from Los Angeles. From its beginnings in the late 80s, Mammoth has grown into the biggest MTB race on the planet, combining not only the Grundig and Norbrook cross country races, but also the infamous Kamikaze downhill and the Reebok dual eliminator races. Here to give you the lowdown on the Mammoth course is Tim Gould's Team, Schw team Schwinn teammate, Mike Closer, second in the World Cup way back in 1989 and 1990. Hi, my name's Mike Closer. I race for Team Schwinn. We're here in Mammoth, California for the eighth round of the Grundig World Cup. We've been racing here for eight or nine years now, and this year we've had a lot of snow this spring, so the course has changed from the 23-kilometer loop that we used to race. It's now an eight-kilometer loop. It's quite spectator-friendly. There's a lot of technical sections, a lot of little climbing uh, sections on it, and we've also got a section they've added that's quite interesting for the spectators around the expo area. It should be a great weekend of racing here. We look forward to seeing you all out here. We're here in the expo area near the start finish line. This is one of the new sections they've added. It's very similar to the trials here, this log we're going to be riding over. And then we're going to head down towards the mammoth and down the stairs. I just descended down the new section. It's extreme downhill section. It's short but steep. And I'd recommend in this section that we're going to want to be one of the first riders down it is there will be some traffic jam and the possibility of taking a tumble there. I just climbed up on the short climb out of the start-finish area, and now we're headed down the high-speed service road, which will take us down the main loop. So here we are on one of the lower sections of the course here in Mammoth. Up ahead, we've got one of the steep, challenging sections with some loose terrain on it here in Mammoth. And this section here is gonna lead us up into the start finish area. I hope you enjoy the show. See you in the race. We spoke to former FM professional, but now also a teammate of Britain's Tim Gould on the Schwinn team, Tammy Jacks Gruel. It is my best season so far. Um, I think that's due to my happiness with my new team and I haven't really incurred any major injuries, which is, which is amazing for me. Usually I get injured pretty badly in the spring, just bad luck, I guess. And um, I'm just really, everything's kind of come together this year. I'm just happy with where I am and um, just training hard. So it's working out. What's your target now in the World Cup? You are so far the second best American right. female rider now and, the, and that's brings you maybe a little bit closer to Atlanta, to the Olympics. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I was second in uh, Vermont, and that was an Olympic qualifying race for us. So I was really happy with that. Um, actually ecstatic, because I was focusing on making the, trying to make the Olympic team, but I, it wasn't my main focus, because um, I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself. So I wanted to be top five in the World Cup this year. What are you doing if, when you are not competing or not practicing? I'm a happy homemaker. <laughs> no, um, I work hard at home. Um, I, that's probably one of my downfalls. I, I like to work out in the yard. I love to do gardening and, and uh, working around the house, painting and doing little house projects. I read a lot and I study. <clears throat> like I'm always studying new things like history and uh, trying to better my vocabulary or grammar, you know, just for writing and just little, little things like that, keeping myself busy. You're one of the few female riders who got married, huh? Yeah, I guess I am. Um, I think Susan DiMatteis is next. <laughs> but, yeah, it's nice. Um, I met Rishi, actually, when I was road racing, and 
and I didn't really know anything about mountain biking that was in 89. I was like, people race those things. I didn't really know anything about it. So actually Mammoth was my first mountain bike race in 89. I came here just out of fun to see Rishi once again. And um, so it's, it's, we just went from there, just developed a good relationship. We now join the elite women on the grid waiting for the start of their five lap, 27 and a half mile race. Course is uh, very good for me, but this uh, one uh, thing is not good for me. The race is height. It's very high. I live at 135 on the sea. Livello, and this is difficult for me. One word about the course? Um, it's it's going to be hard. We do five laps, and um, there's a couple of pretty steep climbs. Not too long, but they're pretty hard, arduous. So it'll be hard. I think it'll be a tight race, though. Join us after the break for the start of the women's race. Original bike components. Performing Arts. 10.000 kleine Explosionen im Blut. Shimano and Eurosport offer you the chance to win 36 limited edition Tommy bikes. Also to be won, superb Shimano t-shirts. To play and win, call the Eurosport hotline now. I'm a I'm a Shimano and Eurosport wish you good luck. to Mammoth. Conditions, are, as you probably noticed, are warm and sunny despite the thick blanket of snow as the women charge off to the start of their race. And then in the lead already is our interviewee Tammy Jacks Gruel, followed closely by Ruthie Mathis and Petso with Furtado in fourth place. Very fast start here. Suits the more road orientated rider. Or someone like Julie Furtado. Doesn't care where she races, Julie. 45 entries for the race today, and already Furtado's in the lead. She's taking them up the climb. Number four there, Maria Paolo Toccato, the other Italian, with Pezzo in front of her. Somewhat overshadowed by Pezzo. Furtado goes through at least 20 metres in front of Ruthie Mathis, riding for Team Evian there. Hasn't had that great a season yet so far. Although, like last season, she seems to be getting stronger and stronger. Ricardo with that rather upright stance of hers, whether she's standing or sitting. She tends to be fairly straight. Whereas Petso is more like a road racer, really. Crouched down over the bars. Pushing quite a big gear there. And there's Susan Demetay riding for Diamondback. And there's 
Little Sarah Ballantyne won the World Cup in 1991 and in 1990 as well. Riders don't seem to be that interested in the water at the moment, despite this man's protestations. Looks quite cold, but it isn't. It's 25 degrees there. Quite windy as well as Furtado streams down the far section of the course with Petso on her tail. She's having a great season so far. Two firsts, two seconds and two thirds. And Ballantyne's up into third place. Excellent riding there. Mathis on her tail and Demetay. There's Takato. And that is Jan Bolland. Teammate of Ruthie Mathis. Used to be a time trialist on the US team. Steaming down the descents here. Petso nowhere near as fast. A little bit more cautious. As is Mathis. She's looking a little tired. I don't know why. Demate not too good on the technical descents. Oh, and neither is this rider here. And that's... Uh, that was either of us over, I think. Yes, it was. It was Eva Orvasova, second in the world in 1991. Hasn't ridden the, the uh, European rounds of the World Cup. She's got a, um, a scholarship from an American university and she's just riding in the States. There's Mathis leading out Valentine. We're on the high section of the course here. Damate. Goes out with uh, her fellow Diamondback rider, Dave Weens. And this is the wet climb here for Tardo. In fairly small gear, just powering up. Looking cool and composed. Not quite so pet, so she's a little bit more hurried in her, in her style. But almost as effective. Here's Mathis. Used to ride on the same team as Thomas Frischneck for Richie. She now rides for the all-women's -women, team of Evian. And Furtado steaming down the descent here. Very fast. Looks like she's got quite a big gap on Petzo. Alison Seidel, the world champion, not riding today, actually. Decided to give this race a miss. Because it's at altitude, some of the riders, and in the men's race, decided not to come. That was Eva or us over there coming through. We're waiting in the finish area here. And it's Julie Furtado. Superb stuff. This is unbelievable. Furtado comes through for her sixth, yes, her sixth win of the season. That is superb stuff. Outdoes her male rival, rival Runa Heidel. But here's Petso in second place. Brilliant riding from Petso. She knew she couldn't catch her, Furtado. But she's done very well to get second. And in third place is Ruthie Mathis. Superb riding, Ruthie. Well done. Her best result so far. Excellent stuff. Did you know you were going to have it from the start? I wanted it. I didn't want I told you at the start I didn't want to ride alone. And I didn't want to ride alone. And so I just wanted to ride a technical race and ride with someone. And so that's what I did. And then... When I got a little bit of a gap, about a lap and a half to go, I got serious and really went as hard as I could. Confirmation of the result there. Potato in first place with Petso in second. Only 19 seconds down with Ruthie Mathis in third. She was two minutes down. Best result for her. We look at the overall ranking. Potato is supreme in first. Petso way out in second with Sidor in third. Whilst everyone was at lunch, our cameraman decided to take some pictures for himself.